Hey everyone, happy Turtle Tuesday. I am Anthony Scott at ToyHypeUSA.com. Today we are checking out the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Classic Cartoon Collection Ace Duck and Mutagen Man 2-Pack from NECA Toys. As I'm sure you're aware, this is inspired from the classic 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series and is exclusively available at Target stores here in the U.S., for international availability, check out ToyHypeUSA.com. That's if you live overseas outside of the U.S. You have the option to purchase this at one of our international sponsors. So do go to the site and check out where to buy. I also would like to thank NECA Toys for providing this two-pack along for review. Greatly appreciate that. So this two-pack comes in the standard Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles window box, which is consistent throughout the line. Uh, we've seen... Uh, the packaging be consistent and what's different about each packaging is that they have images of the characters that are included such as ace duck and mutagen man are featured on the front here as well as the turtles and their names on top as well as the nickelodeon logo on the side are images of the figures so there's your look at ace duck right there and the other side you have mutagen man And of course, the back, you have images of the two figures, Ace Duck and Mutagen Man, and a look at other figures that are also available now. We've previously reviewed Ground Chuck and Dirtbag and Wingnut, excuse me, Wingnut and Screwloose. So go back and check out for those reviews. And we should have a review for Anthrax and Scumbag from NECA. I don't have those in hand yet, but I'm expecting them to come anytime. And you also have a brief description right above that about the classic cartoon. On the top of the packaging is the Ninja Turtles logo right there. And of course, the bottom gives you the names of all the great people at NECA Toys responsible for bringing these figures together. Here's a closer look at the figures in their plastic tray, as well as their interchangeable heads and all their accessories, which you see here which we're gonna cover a bit more in detail in the video. And behind that are all of their interchangeable hands back there. So what I'm gonna do now is open this up and let's take a closer look. Here's your in-hand look at Ace Duck. He appeared in the episode Attack of Big Mac, where the turtles watched an Ace Duck film festival on television and he was only briefly shown uh, before Donatello changed the channel. The character had no other appearances in the show, so I don't believe you saw his entire body. I think it was just the head and the torso. But he was part of the vintage toy line, so I think with that they included him on the show. He's definitely a, one of the more memorable heroic characters from the series, and he's definitely a fan favorite. Which is interesting because he never really met the Turtles or Fort Shredder or anything. But fans remember him from the show. They remember him from the toy line. He was also in the comics. And he has a very large fan base. So it's great to see that NECA is even including Ace Duck. Uh, which again, his primary appearance was in the vintage toy line. And as well as the TV series. Which is what the figure is based on. The TV series, not the toy. Just to clarify... So he's a mutated duck with a pilot's jacket, which you see on him there, sculpted fur, very, very nicely done, blue pants. There's also a uh, soft plastic belt around his torso, which can be moved around a little bit. You see how it just hangs there. The belt is not removable. There's also a holster for one of his two pistols which I'm going to put in there, but I just wanted to show you guys. On the other side is a pouch. Which you see right here. And the back, this is where the egg grenades go. So he comes with two egg grenades and you can stick them right in there. The pilot's jacket has this missile on the back with the feathers. I'm guessing that means uh, how many times he hit his mark, at least in the film. Great paint apps. There's really no bleeding or anything, and they really nailed it as far as design. The head sculpt, 
Well, as you can see, the cap is removable. It's basically uh, loose fitting on the head. The head sculpt, very nicely done. He has his teeth on both sides. The beak is pointed up. Let's just take this off. And the eyes, very nicely done. Great attention to detail here. The wings, also sculpted individual feathers here with some black lines, giving it some definition in there. And let's take a look at the back again. Very, very nicely done. The feet are webbed, which you see here as he's a duck. And you also have that black shading, giving it definition throughout the sculpt, the, uh, the pilot's jacket, the pants, the belt, everything, even the fur. Here is your in-hand look at Mutagen Man, inspired from his episode appearance in Enter Mutagen Man, where he was accidentally stumbles upon Shredder's secret lab and falls into a tank of ooze, becoming Mutagen Man. Despite only appearing in one episode, the character remains to be extremely memorable into the minds of fans, and he was even used a lot more in the 2012 series. Uh, but this character here, as you're so I'm sure you're aware, inspired from the classic cartoon series. And I think they nailed it as far as the uh, likeness in here. Uh, extremely well done. Just look at all that great sculpting and tooling that went into it. Uh, the mutated brain uh, with the uh, spine attached to it. Mutated spine, I guess you could say. Uh, really, really nicely done. Mutagen Man comes in a teal and purple containment suit that he is forced to wear, which contains the mutagen so that he can survive. Uh, the torso is a tank, which you see the mutagen right below his uh, stem there, or spine. So they captured this likeness by using clear plastic. That's very nicely done. You can see the shine, the glares right off that. And of course the containment suit they really did a stellar job on it. The feet are both different. One has, I guess you could say, robotic parts, while the other foot, which you see there, is a bit more mutated. And of course, the back, you see the uh, two tanks back there, not removable. And you see all this detail here, including the purple lumps on his skin, the two different color uh, Teal deco on his arms and legs, indicating the, the shading. Also on the top of the head, you see this pink part right here. So there's a lot of great attention to detail going on here. I think they really did a stellar job on this. Removing the head is fairly simple. I'm going to demonstrate that in the video uh, just a few minutes, but going back into Ace Duck. For accessories, Ace Duck includes his movie poster, which you see on the left there. It was hidden on the side of the plastic tray, as well as an interchangeable head sculpt with an open mouth, four sets of interchangeable hands, two service pistols, two A grenades, a VHS tape, and a film reel. There's a closer look at the accessories. Here's a closer look at the poster. Again, the artwork is phenomenally done. Ace Duck gets revenged. Various names on here with Drake Drummond. As you see there. And of course, the back of it is just plain. So you can put it on a wall. You can uh, display it on a Ninja Turtle diorama. It's definitely a great addition to the figure. Here's a closer look at Ace Duck with the A grenades and pistol in the holster there. The A grenades fit in perfectly. And they don't fall out in case you were wondering. The pistol, however, can't close without uh, damaging the holster. So just be aware of that I tried both of them. And you can't put it back into the the loop there so there is that issue here's a closer look at the pistol that was in the holster there this one 
As you can see, the sides are sculpted smoothly, dark gray and black deco, very nicely done. And a look at one of the interchangeable hands with the thumbs up and the finger pointed. Here's a closer look at the revolver as well as his closed interchangeable right hand. As you see here, the revolver, you can see that on the sides there. It's not smooth like the other one, and it's also painted in a dark gray and black. Ace Duck's other head sculpt is an open mouth, and you see the inside, the mouth details there, including the tongue, which you would see, it's in a light purple. So you should be able to see that on camera. I know it's a little bit dark in there. And of course, the hat is removable. And so there's that. The details on this, very nicely done. Also included is a VHS cassette, which, as you may remember, was used back in the 80s and 90s. It's painted in black, light gray, and a little bit of a darker gray, which you see here. And the detail is also shown on the other side. So the likeness, very nicely done. They definitely did a great job on it. And Ace Duck can hold it in his open grip hand there. And if you notice, I even went ahead and put on two new hands, including the open grip and this pointy finger with the thumbs up hand. Here's a look at the film reel, which is painted in a light gray with black deco. And you can see that nicely done intention to detail there. There's also a sculpted texture in there. So very nicely sculpted. It looks realistic. And of course, I switched out the uh, left hand here with the thumbs up. Here's a look at Ace Duck with his closed fisted hands, which are in the socket there. Overall, they did a remarkable job on him, really capturing his likeness very well. Here's a comparison of Ace Duck along with some other Turtles figures, Muckman and Joe Eyeball recently released. Overall, Ace Duck, phenomenal figure, fits in great with the overall vibe of the collection. And it's really about time we get him into this line. So now we're going back into Muckman. I've already reviewed the figure mostly. Now we're going to swap out the interchangeable heads. So what you want to do is unplug this from the plastic, all three of them. See the holes right there. And just be aware that this part is a little bit frazzled, so just take your time, go very slow. Let's push it back so you can see. So this helmet piece off comes right off. And what you're going to be left with is this part right here. Clear plastic right there. And then you're going to just very carefully... And I can't stress that enough. You don't want to use much force. Otherwise, you could end up breaking something. But that should come off as easy as that. So here's your look at that. Let's put that down. Let's just take a closer look at this head sculpt. Because I'm not going to swap it back once I swap it. And so that's the look there. The mouth piece it looks like it should be hinged but i haven't been able to get it to work the spine that you see here is connected to the mutagen which is on the bottom there that comes off very easily so let's take that off so see how that disconnected the head has a hole in the back and it's still connected to that. So what I'm gonna do is heat this up so it comes off a little easier. Uh, I have not been able to remove it yet because I haven't heated it up. So let's do that. Okay, so I just heated it up and what that does is that softens up the plastic so that things are much easier to remove without breaking it. And you see the hole back here. So you should notice that the spine is still attached. So I'm going to heat that up to remove it. 
Okay, so I heated that up. I wiggled it a little bit, and that came right off. So, here's one more look at that head. He looks a little scared or frightened. And we're going to be swapping it out with this bit more angry looking head. Same facial details, and it also has a hole in the back for right back here. So, first thing, I'm going to reattach the spine. Okay, so spine is reattached. And then we're going to plug it in back here. So there's your look at this other head sculpt here. This draw is hinged right here, so you can move that up and down as shown. All right, so once that's attached, and I just went ahead and heated it back up just to make sure that everything's all good to go. So next part, we're going to put this plastic piece back on, and that's just going to attach just like that. Hold it back in there, press it in, and this piece right here. It's gonna go just like that. Plug it in there, plug the one on top, and there you go. So swapping it out is fairly simple. It's not that difficult. Just again, make sure to heat up those joints, making sure you don't accidentally break anything because you definitely don't want to break a highly detailed collectible figure like this. And let's just take one more look at a comparison of the two head sculpts. So both heads are unique, facial details and the expression. Here's a look at Mutagen Man's accessories, including another look at his interchangeable head sculpt. Included are three sets of interchangeable hands, and you also have one extra one, so seven total hands. You also have a tank, which is right here. And you also have the Mutagen Machine Gun, which is the official name for it on the vintage toy from Playmates Toys. However, in the cartoon, which is what this figure is based off of, I don't believe the uh, weapon was actually named. It could be just his blaster. Uh, so there's that. And here's a closer look at that. You can see all that great attention to detail here, the paint deco. Really remarkably done. No bleeding on it whatsoever. Here's a look at the tank, which can be held in these open grip hands, which you see here. The tank is painted in light and dark gray with red in the front. And it also has a little bit of a nozzle right there on the front. Also a little bit of detail right there on the sides. Or excuse me, one side I should say. Painted very nicely, nice crisp paint apps, no bleeding on this particular sample. So very happy about that. Up next is the Mutagen machine gun and these two open grip hands that can hold this blaster here. Again, the official name for it was included with the vintage toy. I'm not sure if the official name for the end show appearance of this was in fact the Mutagen machine gun, but... That's what I'm just going to call it. So you see all this great attention to detail here. These double barrows right here. And what looks like a uh, front of a vacuum machine in the front here. Very nicely done. There's so much detail here, especially with the, uh, the blasters with the Turtles line. And each one has their own distinctive like likeness. And NECA has really been doing a fantastic job capturing that. Great attention to detail on this. The paint applications, as you can see, very nicely done. There's just a lot going on here. Uh, looks like he can hold it on with two hands right here. So one right here, one right here. And let's just take a look at the bird's eye view of this. There's just 
a lot of great attention to detail here. Really happy with how this came out. Let's take a look at the bottom. And let's turn it around. A lot of detail again, very nicely done. He can point it straight as shown at a turtle or when he switches sides and uh, fight Shredder and Bebop and Rocksteady. So here's a look at him holding this with both hands. He's got a pretty good grip on it, but you can't really point and shoot it this way. He could just more hold it. So I don't think too many people are going to pose him like this, but I just wanted to show you guys what this looks like. Uh, it's just an option. Here's a look at his open hand, which you see on the, uh, the left socket there. And I also went ahead and kept the mutagen machine gun in his right hand, which you see it now pointing up. Here's a comparison of Mutagen Man along with how he looks with some other figures from the line. As you can see, the scale works very nicely with his on-screen appearance and the colors, the attention to detail. It's really a win getting uh, Mutagen Man in this line, and he looks great compared to the other characters and others. Overall, Ace Duck and Mutagen Man, phenomenal done. Couldn't be any happier with how these came out. The likeness to the animated series is spot on as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they came out great. I think fans will definitely love them. These are available right now at Target stores here in the U.S., so make sure to head out and get them. And for international availability, check out ToyHapUSA.com. That's if you live overseas. U.S. fans can also purchase them as well, If uh, so that's an option for you. Thank you again to NECA Toys for providing this two-pack for review. Greatly appreciate that. I am Anthony Scott at ToyHypeUSA.com. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more coverage.